what I'd like to do today is to share some information with you regarding cybersecurity and the need for talent development in this area. And, you know, a little bit about how UNB and CIC can play a small role, play a small role in, in, in supporting the sector. Um, I'll get into the slides. Um, so what are we hearing? And the, and I should mention that these, uh, uh, this, some of this information here is from, uh, ISC2. They did a really good, um, cybersecurity workforce study in 2020. And so uh, I've gleaned some information from that. So a uh, couple things. Uh, first thing is what are we hearing about the demand for the cybersecurity workforce? So, um, worldwide. Uh, cybersecurity workforce gap is roughly 3 million. Now, you know, I've, I've heard different figures, three, 3.5 million in that range. Um, the, the study says that the Canadian gap is estimated at around a hundred thousand workers or so. And it is true that the pandemic has had a bit of an impact on the hiring of cyber security professionals. Um, the word is that it has cooled a little bit. However, uh, attacks and threats have actually increased over the period of the pandemic. And uh, I was talking to, to um, uh, Tech Impact, the director there, and they've recently done a study um, for Atlantic Canada uh, with respect to cybersecurity and professionals in demand. And they were saying that that uh, demand has has reduced a slight bit over the uh, over the pandemic, but um, the the prospects or the, they're expecting significant growth over the next couple of years for for cyber people. So sort of consistent with what um, what the uh, ISC study has has reported. So just a couple other interesting points here: over eighty five percent of cyber professionals have some sort of uh, bachelor's degree, could be a master's, bachelor, uh, sorry, 85% have some sort of degree, bachelor's, master's, PhD, whatever. Um, the other point is that half of the cybersecurity workforce have computer science degrees. So, you know, this means that there's a fair, fairly broad pathway into cybersecurity jobs. Um, so, uh, next slide is, uh, is a little bit about, um, what types of jobs are out there for cybersecurity workers. So this is uh, sort of a mind map and it reflects many of the types of jobs and activities that are related to the cybersecurity domain. And, you know, if you have a look at it there. Um, each color represents a, a different stream, if you will, and requires a different skill set, training, you know, experience in terms of cybersecurity. For example, if you look at the red stream there, uh, you have risk assessment. And so the areas of focus can include, you know, things like understanding social engineering attacks or pen testing on systems or you know, doing vulnerability scans. So this skill set is different from the green stream, for example, where there is a requirement to perform security audits, uh, stay abreast of laws and regulations pertaining to information security, and, um, you know, developing your company's policies and procedures to ensure that you're, uh, to ensure compliance. So so red may be a little more technical, uh, green more focused on compliance and communication and that type of thing. So I guess the point here is that cybersecurity is not just about uh, technical, but there are also other skill sets that are required to make online safe and secure. Uh, okay, let me switch up this slide. Um, okay, so uh, what types of people are needed to support the cybersecurity industry? Deloitte 
had published a study called, it's a great study, I would recommend it. It's called The Changing Faces of Cybersecurity. And they basically outlined seven personas or sets of capabilities required to work in cybersecurity. And so you can see sort of the seven figures there. So you've got your, your defender, your scientist, your sleuth, your hacker, firefighter, strategist, and your advisor. So, you know, it may be helpful for companies to think of personas and skill sets that are required across different occupations. You know, if people have a skill set and general knowledge required, they may be able to quickly learn some of the technical skills that are required to succeed in the, in the particular job. So if we look at the definition, I'm going to switch slides here, look at the definition and example of the competencies and knowledge required for the personas. So uh, the first one is defender and defender support and maintain security of the network and data. So, you know, a competency for a defender might be good judgment. Uh, uh, and the knowledge or uh, the knowledge set might include, you know, understanding security architecture. Next one is scientists. So scientists, as it says there, analyzes cybersecurity related information to improve security posture. So in terms of competencies, you know, a, a person like that would need to have a good threat mindset. Um, in terms of skills or knowledge, you know, intelligence analysis would come into play. Uh, the sleuth essentially investigates breaches. So uh, sleuths, uh, a sort of a competency might be critical thinking, uh, you know, in, in a skill set, they would need to know about computer forensics. Next one is hacker. So conducts activities to look for system vulnerabilities and make things safer. So in terms of a uh, hacker, obviously want people that are very creative and, uh, you know, a skill set or a knowledge might be pen testing. Then the firefighter, the kind of the first responder that, um, you know, is responding to incidents, deals with security incidents to systems, data and networks. So um, firefighters obviously need good judgment. Uh, they may need knowledge of, you know, security tool administration. The strategist, uh, so provides security management and direction. So strategists are, you know, maybe a level up, let's say, maybe not as into the weeds as some of the other uh, personas that you would see. But uh, obviously, a strategist would need to have good, good leadership and, uh, you know, uh, business acumen and that kind of thing. Um, I think the last one there is advisor. And so, the advisor uh, advises on design and setup of secure networks and systems. So um, communication is a key trait that an advisor would have good communications. Um, they may need to have knowledge of policy, regulatory and legal issues. So I guess the point of this is just to say, you know, certain types of people are required to fill different roles within cybersecurity landscape. And, you know, you may be better suited for some types of cyber jobs and other types of jobs. And where there are technical skills required, these are things that can be learned. Um, and we see things changing very, very quickly. So people are always having to upgrade their skills and, and develop new skills. So just a little bit on that. I'll go to the next slide. So again, the, the information here kind of reflects the composition of Canada's cybersecurity workforce. Um, so uh, Deloitte took those um, 
those personas and they kind of looked at, um, you know, where they were presently in play for Canada. So you can see that the different types of um, uh, people are are spread fairly evenly across the you know the the job the jobs and the domains. So hacker I think is there at is the lowest at ten percent. Advisor is uh, eighteen percent. So that's the highest. So um, strategists and scientists are said to be the hardest roles to fill. I think, you know, the importance and demand for these types of roles is bound to change uh, in the future. Threats evolve, technology evolves. So the mix that you're looking at there right now could, could change and probably will change over time. Okay, next slide. So uh, what I did here was, this is, these are examples of cyber jobs that are currently posted. So I, act, I went into a, a, a one employer website that, you know, has a, you know, a decent cyber fo footprint to look at a few of the jobs that they had posted. And I kind of wanted to see what the titles were and if uh, they fit somewhere on the cyber workforce grid. So I picked 10 sort of random jobs off the list off of the, the jobs that were listed. And um, so as you can see, uh, security tester was one job listed, which would be similar to hacker, uh, security, reacher, uh, security researcher for threat intelligence, uh, which is more, would more be in the role of a scientist. Uh, vulnerability specialist would be your advisor, senior cyber strategist, obviously a strategist, manager, identity access, defender, uh, you know, risk management advisor, strategist, privacy data manager, uh, defender, which is, you know, uh, becoming an increasingly important, um, you know, the, the, the management of data is becoming increasingly important. And this is an interesting one, cyber insurance advisor, and, you know, I'm sure that's probably a new job within the last five years that, you know, probably 10 years ago, we wouldn't have thought of. And then uh, the last one there is a level two security analyst. I put firefighter or sleuth, probably somebody that is uh, working within a, a security operations center. So just, um, you know, I m might not have them all categorized appropriately, but just interesting to see um, what's out there and how they might fit within the, uh, the, the categories. Um, you can see that the jobs and the skill sets are quite diverse. Some are more technical while others are not. Um, you know, I think it's fair to say when it comes to cybersecurity, the job lines can be a bit blurred and often one area bleeds into another area. So people are continually being challenged to, to, to sort of work in new and different contexts and that kind of thing. Um, and I just wanted to mention something quickly about NICE. I don't know if, if people are familiar with the, with the NICE uh, framework. So NICE is from the US. It's the National Institute for Cybersecurity Education. And they actually have a framework as well that is focused on six categories. So they've kind of have a little different take on the categories of, of, of cybersecurity, the uh, cybersecurity workforce, if you will. So they, their, their categories are operate and maintain security provision, protect and defend, um, collect and operate and oversee, I believe, and no, collect and collect and operate. And then oversee and govern, I believe. And so uh, an interesting exercise, if you want, is to go into cyberseek.org and what they, what the, the website there has, it's a not-for-profit organization. They kind of, it's US based and they take that, the sort of the nice framework and they identify the different jobs sort of available in the US according to their 
category. So it's sort of an interesting exercise just to go in and have a look at at um, at uh, where the the jobs required are and that type of thing. Okay, so next slide. Um, yeah, so so many options, so little time. New Brunswick landscape. So a little closer to home now. Uh, you know, there are many types of cyber training options that can be accessed. So, you know, in New Brunswick, obviously cyber is, is something that we're committed to and very interested in. We have a number of, of really solid partners that are working um, on cybersecurity, on the cybersecurity file uh, from different kind of different areas, you know, research and development, commercialization, uh, training, obviously, which is what we're talking about today. But there's a number of different cybersecurity training offerings in New Brunswick. So as it's listed there, we have community colleges. So NBCC, CCNB, uh, Eastern College, Olton College. So um, these uh, organizations would offer diplomas and programs in cybersecurity of various lengths and you know, different topics that they would be covering. We have a number of online institutions that are offering cyber training. So University of Fredericton, uh, College of Extended Learning, uh, UNB. Uh, so uh, for example, University of Fredericton has, a, has an executive MBA in cybersecurity leadership, which is an uh, interesting and, um, our universities themselves. So we have St. Thomas, UDM, uh, Mount A, University of New Brunswick. So all of those uh, universities have uh, computer science degrees. Some offer uh, concentration in, in the area of cybersecurity. So, which is what uh, UNB has. So you can take a computer science degree with a concentration in cybersecurity. I mean, obviously, uh, UNB also offers master's, uh, PhD, and specialized kind of hands-on cybersecurity training. And then we have uh, CyberNB, uh, which is a key partner here in New Brunswick. They deliver a number of different courses. Um, they have a cyber Im immunization program, uh, cybersecurity and technical support programs. They have um, mentorship and virtual co-ops. Cyber Defense League, Cyber Titan, Digital Skills for Youth. So CyberNB really um, is a great sort of training resource. And particularly, they do a lot of good work in terms of supporting the, uh, the, the feeder system, for example, uh, into the schools, you know, getting, getting kids um, thinking about cybersecurity as a potential career. So when they hit, you know, post-secondary, they've got a good, they've got some skills and they've got a good sense of, of um, what they might like to do. So as you can see, a lot of great options and, you know, this doesn't even get into the whole issue around certifications. I mean, certifications are, you know, there's, there's a ton of certifications out there um, and, you know, you can do your own homework, I guess, but, um, you know, a lot of times we'll see existing cybersecurity employees uh, look to certifications as a, mean to up, as a means to upskill. Um, there are vendor-specific certs like Microsoft you may want to get into depending on what sort of platforms you're working with. There are vendor sort of agnostic or vendor-neutral certs that don't necessarily tie you to a particular company uh, like uh, CISSP, for example. So there's lots of options out there for certifications and lots of opinions on sort of which, which certs are, are the most valuable. So in terms of, I'm just gonna flip to the next slide here. So um, this is, uh, you know, entitled, how can UNB CIC help? Um, so we at UNB and CIC are, are playing a role, I guess, in developing the next generation of cybersecurity uh, talent. Um, 
you know, we've got, uh, I guess I'll, I'll mention a couple of programs up there. So there's two programs that UNB and CIC has developed and launched to support industry. And they are, as you can see there, the MACSEC and the RICS. So RICS is Research Intensive Cyber Knowledge Studies. Mac, MACSEC is Masters of Applied Cybersecurity. So those are two of our sort of our flagship programs. MACSEC is a 12 month program that covers a number of subjects such as, well, some of them are listed there, but get into uh, software security, privacy, cryptanalysis, things like that. Um, I would say probably the differentiating factor for MACSEC is the fact that they, the, the students that are admitted into the program do a, do a four month capstone project where they get to work on actual cybersecurity challenges and issues that are kind of presented by our industry partners. So it's, it's excellent because it's good, it's hands-on, and they're dealing with uh, sort of the latest and greatest issues of the day. Um, students graduate from the MACSEC program with a master's uh, after a 12-month period. And then the RICS program, um, covers topics, you know, a number of topics, um, and, uh, including SIEM, AI, you know, networking, privacy, all those kind of things. So, so the, the, you know, it, the, the RICS, I guess, the RICS, I would say is done in a sort of a, a hands-on practical way using the infrastructure that we have, the labs, the data sets, the cybersecurity software platforms. And the RICS is completed over a four month period with the cybersecurity company interns. Um, so again, a little different, a little different flavor meant to be, you know, a little more hands-on. Uh, I'll say as well, um, I get this question a fair amount, like many of the graduates from the MACSEC, the way it works, many of the graduates from the MACSEC are uh, are selected by corporate sponsors to become uh, company interns. And so companies would interview the students, you know, ex when they're accepted into the, the MACSEC and they commit to doing the MACSEC, the companies would interview them and provide scholarships to students, the students that they have selected to complete their master's degree and then hire them as interns to complete the RICs during their internship. So it's kind of interesting or unique, I guess, in that it provides a pathway to employment for the interns, helps them understand the company culture that they're, that they're getting into, gets them plugged into the work that they will be doing. And um, if they were to be hired on a, on a permanent basis by the sponsor. And I'm thinking, in mo you know, in most cases they are. So this is a relatively new program. It's exciting because the students get to, to kind of land in meaningful kind of cybersecurity positions for the sponsoring companies. Um, okay, I'm just looking at this slide to see if there's anything else I need to cover. I think that's probably good for that one. Um, all right, so this is a short video that I thought was kind of interesting. It's from PwC. Is cybersecurity the job of the future? So um, kind of an interesting video here. I'll see if I can play it for you. When I was in year 10, I was in Botswana, Africa. I didn't know what I was gonna do. <laughs> so for me, the mentality at the time was to get ready for whatever it was that I was interested in later. I started my career as a software developer in a security perspective for a bank. And I did really cool things with data and developing algorithms that can help stop people abusing credit card systems. And then I joined PwC. 
at PwC, we help businesses understand cyber challenges and help them on a journey to be cyber resilient. And what I do now is I'm a CEO and founder at Agilis. We do cool things using machine learning and AI, artificial intelligence. And the mission at my company is to just help everyday internet users do it securely. To me, there's, there's a creativity element to it. There's room to maneuver. There's room to differentiate yourself from the next product. To me, it's the opportunity to, to make an impact. Cyber is the future. That's where the majority of the opportunities are right now. The CFO now, Chief Financial Officer, must understand cyber. The CEO must understand cyber. And who knows where cyber is headed? There's a cyber domain now that looks at why cyber criminals do what they do. And so being prepared to get into a psychology major or you know, a data analytics major under cyber, you know, that's, that's key. The internet now is, is at the backbone of what we do and who we are. We interact with each other, with our service providers, with our siblings, loved ones and friends online. And therefore, our lives are online. Be ready for it. Yeah, so kind of a, an interesting video there. He kind of explains how he got started in cybersecurity field with some usable programming skills that morphed into sort of more direct cybersecurity involvement. And I notice he kind of gives the shout out to sort of non-technical domains. I think he mentioned psychology and, you know, how that could fit into kind of human-centric cybersecurity. So thought that was an interesting, interesting video. There we go. Um, a little shout out to uh, Napoleon Dynamite. Um, and basically the, the point here is that, uh, you know, cyber skills are in demand. And um, yeah, so just uh, some references there uh, from some of the documentation that was used. And um, yeah, so that's, uh, that's basically it. So um, I, uh, I thank you for your, your time and attention. Hopefully you picked up, uh, you know, one or two things that you may not have been aware of before. And um, uh, also my, if, if you have any questions or comments, my contact information is on the uh, noted on the slide there.